there's, there's the point. I just don't see the point in overexposing a major problem by showing graphic images of, of a specific group. Just don't see the point. Okay, so obviously I was a bit heated yesterday <laughs> coming out of that subway. Uh, the image of that naked woman, I don't know who she is, and I'm sure she doesn't know that her image is being broadcasted in a subway hallway. Dignity. What is dignity? Self-identification was perhaps the first thing I grappled with when I first arrived to Korea, both through my own personal journey and through the lens of others. Yesterday, I read a few articles about HIV, AIDS, and tuberculosis. One article described the rising epidemic of HIV, AIDS in China. The other article focused on an unknown disease which HIV-like symptoms um, primarily existing amongst Asians. The other article focused on the partying scene in the UK, uh, the rising HIV AIDS cases amongst the gay community in the UK. Now, I don't think, with evidence of a clear human problem, that I would see uh, Asian babies, distraught images, horrible degrading images of Asian babies or uh, gay white men, images of gay white men or Asian babies sprawled throughout subway hallways or, or supermarkets. I just don't see that. And nor would I want to see that. There are different ways to bring awareness to a plight. Um, I don't feel pity for the victims in those images. I actually feel a sense of shame. Uh, it has been the overwhelming norm to see those images constantly broadcasted in, in so many different types of ways. I don't even feel a sense of blind love for the people seeking donations. My desensitized nerves have sparked a hidden anger. Now, of course, I understand the, the goodness, the goodwill behind bringing awareness, but disaster capitalism always creeps into my head. <laughs> Coupled with my fatigue, I'm just tired of the, the one-story narrative about this distraught continent of Africa. There's so much more to see than that. Uh, in Korea, since I'm often seen as African before American, I, I can't seem to break myself away from those images. I uh, self-identify with them um, in many ways. Yes, I'm American, but a lot of my students, a lot of my Korean colleagues at first had a, a difficult time coming to grips with the fact that I was American. For them it was, okay, but where is your family from? As if whites were the original inhabitants of North America. To be fair, Korean Americans, Gyopos, um, Americans of mixed ancestry, and white and Indian South Africans go through the same exact thing. This identity struggle where we all pretty much hate having to over explain where we come from. Yeah, yeah, so I'm black American of African descent, but I'm not from Africa, and I wouldn't know which country I'd be from if I were to visit Africa. Yeah, my name is Wilkin. As you can see, the average Korean guy would be uh, a bit confused. Yeah. Since I flew to Korea just weeks after the Haitian earthquake, I was able to make that distinction quite clear to my students and my Korean colleagues. Now, it wasn't easy. I remember during an English camp, uh, <laughs> me and Rowan, a really good South African friend of mine, he's a 6'4 uh, South African white guy, and I'm a 5'9 you know, black guy from the States. And uh, we had to uh, introduce ourselves to our students at camp. And here, <laughs> here I was. Uh, hello, everyone. You have to speak really slow. Hello, everyone. My name is Wilkin Brutus. I'm from America. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Rowan stands up. He's towering high. Hello, everyone, with his South African accent. I can't remember how it goes, so I'm not even going to attempt to try. Um, but he says, hello, everyone. My name is Rowan, and I'm from South Africa. And there's this silence in the room, and they all start cracking up. <laughs> right, you almost got us. You almost got us. <laughs> and uh, me and Rowan looked at each other like, <laughs> in terms of identity, we tend to represent nation first and then everything else is second, third. Um, a Korean won't say he's Korean, but he also has Mongolian blood and so on and so on. No, he's Korean, right? That's what he's going to say. A white American won't really go into details about his European ancestry um, unless it's necessary. Yes, my father's Irish or Italian or Polish. Um, it really depends on how close they are to that 
other aspect of their identity. When you're living or if you're traveling through homogeneous countries, uh, you're constantly grappling external forces trying to identify you. That could in many ways lead to an, uh, an identity crisis. And since I haven't been back home in over a year, uh, I think I went through a little identity crisis walking through that hallway. We all have a shared identity. It fits into this whole notion of identity politics. Um, and with that said, for the most part, there's this universal um, feeling towards what's considered humane and inhumane. Those images don't say a thousand words. It only says one. Struggle. I'm sure there's more to that human than just struggle, right? What do you think? Do you think overly graphic images are necessary to bring awareness to a specific plight? Why isn't there a fair representation of that plight? Why is it only acceptable to show Africans suffering? The representation is, is, is fair in cancer awareness. It's almost artistic in cancer awareness, but not HIV AIDS. Mm -mm. There is a shame, a particular ugly type of shame that comes with HIV AIDS that does not exist when you talk about cancer, despite both diseases breaking down the immune system and having a significant amount of trials and tribulations for that person. Um, how we view both problems are very different. I read a recent review about two books, one called Illness as a Metaphor and AIDS and its Metaphors. And both books were written by the amazing Susan Sontag. And um, AIDS and its Metaphors um, actually highlights how cancer was very much stigmatized just like AIDS and I did not know that um, but that was quite interesting how AIDS have overtaken the stigmatization of of what was once attributed to cancer so um, yeah take that into consideration of how um, society shapes how we see um, things affecting the human race <laughs> um, yeah so one love, peace, and be free. And, um, yeah. Those images, ugh.